Hello everyone, it's Mindy and I'm back with another video tutorial for scrapappel.com. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make a magic picture slider using the Lawn Fawn Magic Picture Slider die as well as the birthday before and afters. So let's get started. Okay, so I have both my dies that we're going to be using to create our magic picture slider. I'm going to be using my Copic Express It blending card so that way I can use my Copic markers when I color my image. This larger die here is going to be the die that we see first and the smaller die is going on to the same Copic Express It blending card so that way I can still color the same image with my Copics. But this one here is going to be the one that's going to be revealed. So this is the second image that we're going to be coloring. So I'm using this birthday before and afters and I'm going to be stamping the the full cake on this piece here and then the cake that has a piece taken out of it is going to be on this one over here. So let's go ahead and stamp those in some memento ink so that way we can get started with the coloring. Okay so we have both of our images stamped and now we're going to go ahead and color them. So let's go ahead and start with this one first. I am going to be using my E43, E42, and E41 for the cake and the frosting, so it has a uh, vanilla tone to it. We're going to start with E43, and we're going to go ahead and start right underneath the icing here. We're going to add a little bit of a shadow because the icing is going to be popped off of the cake a little bit, so that way it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow right onto the cake. So we want to make sure that there's a little shadow there. And then we're going to go ahead and come right up at the top and we want to come down just a little bit and flick going in towards the center of the cake because we want to make sure the cake has a roundness to it. So we're going to do the same thing on this side over here. We're going to flick going towards the middle, tracing that line, and then make it a little bit thicker. And it's kind of going at a little bit of an angle, so it almost looks like a little triangle that's right here. And then we want to make sure that it looks like it's going to the back, so we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of a shadow going back there and all the way along the back part as well. Since it's hidden by the candles and farthest away, we wanna make sure it has a little bit of a shadow. Let's go ahead and zoom a little bit more. Okay, so then we're also actually, we're gonna take this and we're gonna add a little bit of a shadow underneath the little icing decorations. And now we're going to take our E42 and just come out a little bit more. So I'm just going to flick. I want to be able to pull out some of that E43. That way I get a nice blend between the two shades. So we're going to do the exact same shape. So it's still a larger triangle now. We're just coming in a little bit more, but we want to keep that same shadowing where it's a little bit heavier up here in the corner so it looks like it wraps around. We'll come down the side a little bit and then also in the front, and then it's gonna be thicker along the back. And then we're also gonna just trace right underneath the E43 underneath the icing decorations, and the same thing underneath the icing here. We are gonna come down the sides just a bit though, so that way it still keeps that roundness. So now we're gonna go ahead and take E41, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull that color through. We're going to go back into some of that E42. So we pick up some of that color and drag it out. And we want to get a nice blend before we go ahead and just finish coloring everything in. A lot of times what happens is when you just go ahead and fin finish coloring it in before getting a good blend, you have a, a line, a harsh line between the two colors and then it doesn't look blended out. So you always want to get a good blend right along the edge of the previous color before you just go ahead and fill it all in. So we're gonna do that for all these areas here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and do one swipe over so that way it stays its lightest. We don't have to worry about blending it out anymore because we've already done that. Now a lot of times when I'm coloring, I like to go back and add a second coat. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. 
I'm going to go back and add our E43 in the exact same spots that we added it the first time. The reason why I like to add this second coat is because sometimes you don't add enough ink the first time and at, by adding this second coat really gets the colors moving on the paper so you can get a better blend. Also, sometimes because we go back into the previous color, it will have a tendency to lighten up those shadows and we want to put those back in there so that way we still have that really deep shadow in all of those areas where we want it. So the cake on the bottom is going to be a little bit different. We want to kind of, we want to add that shadow there still, but we also want to create texture. So I'm actually going to go back with my E43 this time before we just go ahead and, you know, keep moving down the shadows. We want to add a little bit of texture, so I'm just going to go back through just the bottom part of the cake and add some dots using the E43. And then we're going to go ahead and take the E42. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to pull in some of those shades, uh, the shadowing that we added with the E43. And the same thing down here, we're going to blend out that shadow just so it has a nice um, gradient when, when we're creating. And then we want to go back and add more dots. So you can go right back over the same ones. We just really want it to look like that spongy cake texture. So back with the E41, usually with the last color, you can go ahead and do a heavy flick and it should blend nicely into the color that you've already laid down. You shouldn't be, have to go over it too much. Just get a nice blend right along the edge of those darker colors that we just added back on our cake. And then this time with the E41, I don't want to go back over it completely. This time we're just going to take the E41 and just make dots. Going back over the darker colors with this lighter color, sometimes it kind of pushes that color out of the way and it will blend out some of those colors, but it's still leaving that, that cake-like texture. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and color the decoration and the candles. So I decided to make the little swirly icing decoration chocolate, so we're going to go ahead and use E25 and E23. I'm going to start with my E25, and we're just going to give a little bit of a shadow right underneath all these little circles that are on our cake here, and then we want to come out just a little bit on each side of the circle, just so it looks like this piece here is standing out more than the little scallop border that's right there so that way it looks like it's casting a little bit of a shadow. Then we're going to take the E23. We're going to get a nice blend and then just fill it in. A little bit of color goes a long way here. And you don't want to leave your marker on the paper too long because then the longer you leave your marker on the paper the more ink that's just going to flow out of it and it's going to saturate the image in that particular area and seep out of outside the lines. We don't really want that. So let's go back and add a little bit more of the E25 just to make that shadow a little bit more defined. And I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to blend it out because sometimes with the icing, how it has a really dark shadow in some areas and then it has a lot of a lighter shadow so it, it gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. So for the candles, let's go ahead and we're going to color them like the rainbow, which is what we're going to be coloring on the inside part of the cake. So let's take the Y02 and let's fill in all of the little flames from the candles. And then I'm going to take the YR12 and we're going to add a little bit more color to the flames. So just right at the bottom part, I'm going to add a little bit of a orange streak so that way it looks a little bit more like a flame. I'm 
All right, and then what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how to use N3, which is a gray, to shadow all these colors. So a lot of times I'll get an email asking, how can you, you know, do you have to have all the markers? And, and you know, you don't have to have all the markers, but you could use your grays to get a deeper definition with just one color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fill in all of our candles. So I'm gonna take my R32 and we're just gonna fill it all in. And then let's do YR12. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do some YG61. And then B12. And then we're gonna go with V12. And then we're gonna go back to our R32. I didn't wanna add a yellow candle since the, the flames are yellow, so that's why I'm, I'm skipping that color. And then we'll add another YR12. So now I'm gonna take my N3 and we're gonna add a little bit of a shadow on the bottom part of the candle. So I'm just gonna flick going up and giving a little bit of a shadow without going too crazy. I'm not going too far up. I just wanna add that little bit of a shadow. So now that we have a little bit of a shadow there and it's gray and so on some of the colors you can see that it's more of a gray. So we wanna go back and recolor over the color so that way it replaces that gray and makes it a darker version of whatever color that we're using. So I'm gonna go back with my R32, go over that gray and then just pull it all the way up. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one here. And then my YR12. And then B12. and YG61, and then V12. All right, so there you have it. We have our cute little cake, fully colored. Now let's go ahead and color the second image. Okay, so we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. We're gonna start by coloring the outside part of the cake first. So we're gonna be using the E43, E42, and E41. Starting with the E43, the shadows are gonna be a little bit different since it has a different angle. So we're gonna still go right over here in this corner just like we did in the other image. And a little bit towards the back and then tracing that back line. And then right in the center part of the cake, we wanna add a little bit of a shadow on the deepest part. And then we're gonna go ahead and trace underneath the frosting and the icing here. And we're also gonna add a little bit of a shadow right here. So let's blend those together with, the, with our E42. So coming out a little bit more. and giving a little flick out on these little stripes. And then we're gonna take the E41, get a nice blend right along the edge of the E42. and on the little stripes. And then we're gonna go ahead and just fill it all in. So there's no more white showing. So let's go ahead and repeat that. So back with the E43.
and then the E42 again. And then the E41. Got our little texture, so let's go ahead and take the E42 and add some little dots, or I'm sorry, E43, and add some of our texture for the cake. And then the E42. And E41. And then let's go ahead and do the chocolate. So E25. And then the E23, fill it all in. And let's go back with the E25 and give a little bit more of a shadow to the frosting. And then we'll go ahead and do the candles. Oh, we want to fill it all in. And orange. Green. Blue. And then this one back here is going to be purple, and then this one's going to be the orange. Go back and add that little bit of a shadow with our N3. And then go back with our colors so that way we can add that color back in there replacing that darker gray or the gray with with the color of the actual candle so it just looks like it's a darker version and then which color am I missing the blue the b12 and the v12 okay so now we're gonna go ahead and color the inside of the Cake. Let's actually, I'm going to take my E42 because you can't really see the E41. We'll just do that. And then let's go back with E43 just to define that shadow a little bit more since we went a little darker on the edge. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take the R32. and color right along the top. And then we're gonna take the YR12. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the YR12 down here. And then I'm gonna take my Y02. And then the YG61. I'm gonna add a little line here right above the cake part just so it could start to look like it's turning green and then we're gonna go ahead and add green down here as well and then we're gonna add some blue and some purple And then I'm gonna add a little bit of pink, so some R20 right at the bottom. 
and I'm gonna start adding the, the pink right there at the bottom and then I'm gonna go back with my, my red, my R32. So then we're gonna go ahead and repeat that. So we wanna really make those colors pop out. So let's go back with R32. And then the YR12, a little bit up here, a little bit down there. And then the Y02. And then the YG61. And then B12. Add a little bit of B12 down here. And then the V12. And then R20. And then the R32. So then we're going to go ahead and let's add a little bit of some smoke so it looks like the candles were just blown out I'm take my n0 and I'm just gonna add some little swirls so that way it looks like it just got blown out and it's when we do the slider image it's gonna look really really cute so let's go ahead and die cut both of our cakes out. Okay, so we have both of our dies. This one is gonna go here, and I have a piece of washi tape that's already on here. Let's see if it's still sticky. Okay, so we, we wanna line up the cake exactly in the same spot as we do both of them in both of these little windows. So that one is dead smack in the middle. You want to pay attention to how close you are on each of the sides so that way you can get it exactly and then we're going to take this one here and line it up exactly if you put the windows kind of next to each other you can see how high up you're going so that way you can kind of get the distance between the top of the cake here and this edge here so it's about the same i'm going to move it over to the right a little bit so that way it is even on both sides and then again take a little piece of washi tape so that way you can get it where it's the die stays in its place so it doesn't shift around in your die cutting machine and then they are ready to be die cut out okay so we have our two pieces and it's die cut this has a little bit of a score line right at the top here so we're just going to fold that down and there's a slot in the center here, so that way we can put this piece through it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to take, we're going to go from underneath, so lift up this part here. And each of these little flaps, let's go ahead and it's probably easier to start at the top. So that way you can go ahead and insert each of these little sections. So the first one's gonna go in that first slot. It's kind of tricky, gotta hold that up. Okay, the first one's gonna go in the first slot. So if you just kind of press down and then you press down on the second one and the third one and that fourth one. So now you, you have your cake and it's cut so that way it slides once we get it glued down it will go better so let's go ahead and get the rest of our card so we can finish putting this guy on our card okay so I have my card we're gonna go ahead and glue that together in just a few minutes but before we can we have to finish putting this guy together so I have a some score tape 1 8 of an inch and you're gonna need a bone folder so right on the edge here, there is a little bit of a score line. So we wanna, it's gonna, it's supposed to close 
on both sides. So we want to score it first. So you're just going to push it down. And then use your bone folder to really crease it. And then we're going to open it back up and we're going to add a piece of of the score tape right along the inside. We want it to be a little bit thicker on that, on both sides, so that way when it closes, it gives it a little bit more room inside so it could slide better. Okay, so got my score tape on there, and then we're gonna just push this closed, and then we're gonna flip this around and do it again on this side. Crease it up and then use your bone folder to flatten it a little bit easier so that way you get a really nice score line. And we're going to open it back up, add that score tape, which takes me a second because of my nail, so I'm going to put you on pause. And then we'll close it. And then we're actually going to add another piece of score tape right here and right here so that way we can close it and it will have like like I said that uh, that extra room inside to really slide okay so all finished and it slides perfect now we're gonna go ahead and mount this on the on some cardstock so we have a black border just like how we're gonna have for the card. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put together our card. I like using a lot of foam tape, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of the Lawn Fawn rainbow pad and I'm just going to glue the rainbow stripes flat to that black cardstock. If I can get my glue out. So we're gonna go ahead and glue it flat. And I like using actual glue instead of using the tape rollers or any type of tape because then I always have that quick second if I don't get it straight and I don't have to worry about ripping the paper off and putting it straight. I could just kind of scoot it over with my fingers and, and it works just great. So now we're gonna go ahead and add some foam tape to the back of here so I can place it onto my card and I can have that little bit of extra dimension. So peel off this last piece and then place it on our card. There we go. And then we're gonna do the same thing for this. We're gonna go ahead and glue this flat to the black mat. And then we're gonna go ahead and mount the black mat to, with some foam tape onto our card. And then we're gonna go ahead and stick this right in the center. I'm actually gonna think of this part as the, the top part, you know, like the whole thing, the whole square. So don't think of it the square being cut off here. Think of this whole thing being the square so that way you can put it right smack in the center there and it won't look like it's off. Then we have our little cake, the candle's blown out. And let's go ahead and take the little cover for, and it has a little arrow so that way they know to pull up. And I did it in black so that way it accent and then this white little um, arrow is gonna show through. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to the back. wants to come there we go and a little bit here here 
right around that little triangle. And then we're going to close it right on top. Make sure it's even so that both sides are even hanging off. And we're just going to hold that for a quick second and then get out our sentiment. So I've gone ahead and stamped my image and mounted it also on some black cardstock so that way it matches the rest of our card. And then I'm going to take some glue and just add a little bit to the back. And then we're going to place it right here on the bottom. Just like so. And then we'll go ahead and add a little bit of glitter. So I'm going to take some Stardust stickles and we're just going to go right around the border of the cardstock, the pattern cardstock. Doesn't want to come out. There we go. So I'm just going to go right around the edge. And we're going to do all four sides. If you want to add any glitter to your image, you would have to do so before you put it together and it would have to dry completely. I'm not sure if it would get in the way of it sliding, so you would have to play around with that. And then I'm also going to add a little bit around the white border. And right along the bottom. All right, so there you have it. A really simple birthday card using the magic slider from Lawn Fawn. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial this month. And if you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to them as soon as I can. If you have any suggestions for any type of Copic tutorials, please feel free to leave those as well. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.